Okay, welcome to the statics or equilibrium lab. And we're going to find out tensions or forces acting on a system using uh, the equilibrium conditions. So what are the equilibrium conditions? First of all, when we say equilibrium, what we mean by that is the system doesn't have any acceleration. A system can move with uniform velocity. That'd be also an equilibrium condition. Uh, but usually in the lab setup, we are talking about something which is not moving. And there are two conditions that we need to do. One was uh, summation of all forces should be equal to zero, and summation of all torques should be equal to zero. Okay, so what happens here is, let's say that you have an equilibrium system. So for example, you can have uh, something like a rod, and it has a certain mass, and you have a rope, which would consider massless. So this is our rope, and that's a rod. And the rod has some mass m, and uh, that is uh, working uh, downwards. That's the weight of the rope. And that's an equilibrium condition because the rod is being held in both two places. One was over here, right over here, and then over here with the rope. So what I always suggest in these type of situations is when we want to analyze it, in this case, what's the most important part? The most important part is the rod itself. And I say be the rod. Like you are the rod here. What are the forces you're experiencing when you are the rod? Well, it's like your head. Somebody is holding you with a rope. So obviously there is a tension force which goes this way, right? There's a tension force this way. This is your feet. And think of it this way that you are wearing shoes. So you, it's in a sense that it starts to slip down due to gravity and things like that. But what happens is that your frictional force actually helps you hold it like that, right? And then, of course, you feel a normal support force coming out of the wall, which would be like this. I usually call this a horizontal and a vertical, because <clears throat> really speaking, there are many, many forces which might be working right there, just not regular frictional force or normal force that we understand, <clears throat> as we understand. So I call it FB and FH. Both FB and FH are working right at that point. So, and then we have an MG. So there are four forces we're talking about here. One is the tension here, one is the weight, and if the rod is uniform, the weight works exactly at the middle of it, and then you have FV and FH working right here. Let's call this um, point A. Let's call this point A. So FV and FH are working at A, MG, is trying to twist the rod this way, working at point A. And this rope is actually holding up this rod, also actually balancing the torque due to mg. So the mg wants to twist it clockwise, and the tension kind of balancing it by putting an anti-clockwise or counterclockwise force, right? So let me go back again and show these uh, two equations. This is torque, remember? This is my torque equation, and this is my force equation. So what I'm going to do is that without solving, very quickly write down these two equations for, for this particular case. I choose my point A because it helps me to make some of the torque terms go zero because Remember, torque is R cross F. R is the distance from the point of support to where you are applying the force, and F is the force itself. So <clears throat> for if I choose the point A, the torque due to FV and FH, those torques are zero because the distance to FV and distance to FH from A is zero, right? So I can safely forget about them. For MG, it would be if the rod length is L, it will be L over two cross with mg, and then for t, it will be <coughs> L cross t. So let me 
write this out here. It would be, this is your, the entire thing is L. So from here to here will be L over two. So if I want to use my summation of the torques, I write A, A means that I'm looking at that point of support. And so there'll be only two, there'll be only two um, torque terms. One is L over two cross with mg. Both of them are vectors, so I put that bar on top. This is the distance vector and there's a force vector. And if I take clockwise to be positive, my anti-clockwise will be negative. It will be L cross with T will be equal to zero. These are vector products. If I consider there's an angle theta between the rope and the rod, and this would be, this angle is 90 degree, we know that. So you end up getting L over two mg sine of 90 degree minus LT sine of theta. I'm not going to solve it, just so that you know, um, well, I'll just go one more step. L cancels out, and you can see right away that sine 90 is one, Right, so I will just write here is mg over two minus L cancels out T sine theta equals zero, right? And so you end up getting T to be mg over two of sine theta. Okay, uh, that's the tension uh, you can find the T right away from that type of uh, uh, solution. The, <clears throat> the other thing that, um, what, uh, sorry, the other thing that I should mention is that the longer the distance, then you, you have, your torque is larger, of course, in this case, right? So let me look at the force terms right now with the summation of forces. If you look at the, all the X forces in here, the X forces would be simply, remember this FH is working to the right. To balance it, it would be T of cosine theta. Does that make sense? So FH is simply T of cosine theta, and there is really nothing, nothing else in this case. So you get your horizontal force right away, okay? Got your horizontal force right away. Let me go over a little bit to the right-hand side and show you what the, what the vertical forces are. The vertical forces F, y, F of Y is FV minus MG minus T of sine theta equals zero. So FV is simply mg plus t of sine theta, right? I'm taking, going up to be positive. And t you already found from here, you plug that in there and you can get, uh, I mean, that's kind of an interesting thing right here. I, mg plus mg over two sine theta, sine theta, so really speaking, if B equals, um, that's kind of interesting. Because the tension involves um, some sine theta, I think. I wasn't expecting that actually, but that's what you get. You can solve it like that. But anyway, um, what I will do is that I will, um, show you some of the exercise problems that we solved for this, uh, for this uh, particular lab. And then what we will do is we will um, go over to um, the lab itself and I will show you it's a crane and I'll have to get particular number, I have to give you a particular number, no, uh, specific numbers uh, for, the, for the solution, okay? Okay, so here um, 
we are at the write-up uh, section of our lab. If you look at the 4A lab list, <clears throat> you will see lab number 10. It has two entries there. One is lab 10A and then there is lab 10B. Lab 10A says basically statics exercise problems. This is to introduce you uh, to the, this chapter. Sometimes what happens that our lab actually comes before I can start it in the class. So <clears throat> in principle, if you do these problems here, you will be more or less got a good introduction to the statics chapter. So, and then there is a statics lab, which would be a <clears throat> very small write-up, actually, you'll see in a second. So if I click on here, I actually talk about two different problems. One problem is like this, the one kind of I showed you in the board, in this, and the other one is, 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 is looks like that. I'm not going to go through in detail because I already gave you uh, the solution to these two problems. And so I want you to look carefully how this was done. Again, I have the equilibrium conditions for force and for torque. I wrote down the torque condition as a torque equation and found the, found the tension. And then also horizontal force and vertical force, the way I mentioned that. Uh, just now on the board. And the only thing I didn't mention is the, how to find the total force, but you know this, how to do it. You take the horizontal and vertical force, square them, add them, take square root of them, and also how to get the angle um, of the total force with respect to either vertical or horizontal force. Uh, similarly, uh, this problem, slightly different, which is up here. This is uh, this one right here. Again, it's similar. Uh, here, the tension is along the, along the rope right here. And again, you can solve for vertical and horizontal force as we described before. One thing uh, you should be careful about is that you really don't care what's happening with the rope with respect to the ground. You don't care for the ground. You are not the ground. You are always this truss or this rod right here. So you're only interested in what are the forces acting right there, okay? So <clears throat> I'll leave, uh, leave this up to you. Go through this very carefully, solve it before you actually do our lab, uh, which is the next one. So I will go back to <clears throat> my lab list here and click on the statics lab. So the objective is to understand equilibrium conditions and find forces acting on mechanical joints using torque and force equations. So again, the torque and force equations are given right there. The, the system, if you're in the lab, you, it, it's kind of as a fun lab. Uh, if you are not, uh, you know, if we are not in the lab, we're kind of missing out on this a little bit, but hopefully this uh, <clears throat> this online uh, lecture can compensate for it, is, for it slightly. I'm going to come back to this diagram in a, in a few minutes, but first I want you to show what the crane, the toy crane actually looks like. This is a toy crane, and this one is similar to one of the problems we just did as one of the exercise problems. So this toy train, this part is kind of the rod we're talking about, or the truss. When I say be the truss or be the rod, this is the part you have to be. And this is the base of the crane. It's connected to the ground. You don't have to worry about it. It's like the ground. You can't see very well. There is this yellow string that is connected to the ground or to the wall, however you want to say it. And there is a force measure. This is, this is a black, uh, two black force measures here. So what happens here, here's that crane, and the crane has certain weight, and the weight, we have to think of the weight as being operated right from its center of gravity. We kind of eyeball that center of gravity. Uh, and then we hang a weight over here. So this weight is pulling it down, so there's a torque being applied right here where the rod is, okay? And again, the center of gravity also has a torque which is applied at the, where the rod is. And then the tension T right here is also applied where the rod is, uh, the torque, but the distance from the 
point where the torque is applied is from here to that string right here. So if you notice in the table, you have L1, L2, and L3. Um, I'll go up and I'll actually describe that in a second, what those L1, L2, and L3 are with respect to the crane. But you can't really see these numbers here on the computer. What it actually shows you is the tension force in Newton, how much you get here and how much you get on the other one. It's a, it's a three-dimension system. So actually, in this case, there are two, two force measures. You have to add them up. Uh, in our figure up, up there, you'll see only one tension. So, so for example, if I get 20 Newton here, 20 Newton here, I have to assume there are 40 Newton altogether being applied here, okay? So let me just go up and show you, this is the same thing, the crane. This is where the rod is, this is point A. I'm looking from the side, that's the tension. This is the string which is actually holding up this crane. If you cut, cut this string, this, this will fall down actually. So W1 is the center, uh, W1 is the weight of the crane. Remember, once you get M1G, you have to multiply, sorry, once you get M1, which is the mass, you have to multiply it with G, which is, um, you know, acceleration due to gravity. So don't forget to, to multiply M1 with 9.8. We're going to hang a mass W2 over here. Again, <clears throat> make sure that you multiply M2 with G. The distance is L1 is from A to the center of gravity of the crane, where we will assume W1 is acting. L2 is from A to all the way to the end, where the W2, the force, the mass we're going to hang. And then L3 is from A to this point where the tension, the string is attached, right? So you got L1, L2, and L3. You also have to measure theta one, theta two, and theta three, because that comes out of the torque equation, because it's a vector product, right? So what's theta one? I take, take a protractor, I measure the vector. This is basically the angle between vector L1 and weight W1. Theta two is the angle between vector L2 and weight W2. And theta three is the angle between vector L3 and the tension T. So those are the three angles that you need to measure. Inclu and also, of course, you have the L1, L2, and L3 there. <clears throat> How do you get M1? Well, if you're in the lab, this is a tedious process. I actually force you to count all the screws, all the individual pieces that make up <laughs> the crane. And then we have separately the screws and all the individual pieces are there. You have to uh, weigh them separately and then multiply with the numbers. But because we don't have that opportunity here, I will actually give you, I have taken out this crane and me measured the mass of it, so I'll give you that mass. So you know already what M1G should be, that's W1, that's the mass of the crane. M2G, we are going to hang a 500 grams or half a kilogram weight right here, so we'll know that also. And we will know L3, we will know also theta 3. So all you have to do is to solve for T. That, that's it, it's just one line uh, calculation, you can do it in like, it will take you a few minutes and we'll be done. Uh, the only other thing I left over here is that solve for horizontal force, vertical force, and the total force that acts right at this point A. I have not put any provision for it, just I wrote it here and solve for FHFV and total F, okay? Oh, uh, there was a mistake here, they, they sh it shouldn't be there, FH and FV. Just solve for T, FHFV, and total F. Let me go down again here to the table. So what you have is, again, you have W1, you have W2, you have L1, L2, L3. Write down everything in meters. If you have <coughs> centimeter, write down everything in meters. These are the angles. And find out T calculation using Again, I'm going up using this equation. Solve for T. That's your T calculated. And then you look at the computer, which I have to give you that computer number. You look at the computer, T experimental, 
and see how close you have come to the real experimental value and calculate the fractional difference between these two. That's basically the entire lab. There is really not much to do it. Um, so uh, there was another thing I was going to say. I keep, <laughs> I'm forgetting it right now. Uh, that is, uh, this will be all in Newtons. And uh, a, make sure that again, that W1 and W2 also in Newtons, so multiply by G. Uh, and then the discussion is compared to this lab setup with many exercise problems in the statics chapter. This lab, I believe, is when you go, if you're an engineer going to mechanic, take mechanical engineering classes, civil engineering classes, <clears throat> this statics chapter is very important. And if you understand today's lab and, lo and go through the statics chapters, when you take the, you know, that uh, many of you will take a statics class and a dynamics class later on, uh, this will really, really help you out to understand um, when you go into those courses. And even when you transfer to the universities, I have students come back and they really appreciate this particular lab, okay? So I'll leave you with that. Um, again, because we're doing these um, videotapes very quickly, there can be, there can be few uh, you know, mistakes in our write-up or when I'm talking, there can be lapses. Uh, but if there are, we're going to correct it on a separate line on the video later on, or maybe I'll, I'll put it out uh, separately on, another, on, a, on a file. So I'll leave, you, leave it at that. Um, even though this is uh, our lab number 10, we are actually videotaping it at the very end. And I want to thank our um, videographer, Brian, and my lab assistant, Hawaida, for organizing this and helping us out uh, finishing this, these, uh, <clears throat> this total lab uh, online program. Thank you. All right, so now we have the crane. Uh, we put it together here at uh, Morena Valley College. So what we have here is that the main uh, truss of the crane right here, which is being held by these strings uh, to a wall or the ground. And we got enough weight over here as if it is actually connected to uh, the ground itself, the, the strings I'm talking about. The crane itself can rotate around this axis right over here. And this axis we'll call this point A. If you look from the side, that will be our point A. So anything that moves on that axis, not including that rod over here, it will be our mass M1. And I'll give you that mass, actually. We'll also know the length from here to the end. And also we'll know the length from here to the center of mass of this crane right here. Um, what's interesting over here that we have these two black items here. And they actually measure <clears throat> forces using some kind of string constant. And we'll have the results up on a computer screen. I'm going to show you in a second. It goes through an interface. So anytime we actually put a weight at the end, like a crane picking up an object, obviously the tension will rise over the string. And that's what we want to show. So for the timing, what we have here is, <clears throat> is just the crane itself has some weight and actually pulling it down if we consider it more or less uniform, well, on average, it's kind of uniform. Uh, the center of gravity is somewhere here, and we will give you a number for it, and it's acting right from here down here. So obviously, there, are, there is tension in the strings. When you look at the torque, by the way, the W1, which is the mass of the crane, will have L1 is from here to here. We're going to measure it in a second, and then, L2 would be from here to all the way to here, where we're going to hang the weight. And L3 would be right here, right from here to here, from there to here. That's L3. This is where the string is. And my angles are, this is theta 3 angle. The theta 1 angle will be here, and theta 2 angle will be over there. 
So what I'm going to go is I'm going to go over to the other side of the table and look at the Newton numbers, what we have right now. So if I look at it here, <coughs> ignore the negative sign. It depends on how we uh, actually put the force measure. So you see there are two of them, and they're more or less balanced. And this is always a big problem <laughs> because the balancing depends on how tightly or how much slack you are giving to each side. So they're more or less balanced. And I can see that if you simply add them up, 23 times 2, that's 46, add one to, more to it. So about 47 Newton uh, force is applied here. So this is a direct measurement of Newton or force. You can think of it as a 4 kilogram object will have a 40 Newton force applied. Like if you put a 4, new, four kilogram object on your hand, it's going to apply 40 Newton force. So here we have about 46 Newton, or 47 Newton rather. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go around again and put a weight at the end of the crane. And you will see this will change. I will come back to it and see the change at the end. This is your experimental <clears throat> number that you need, you're going to compare with. You're going to calculate the tension in the string from our equations. And then you're going to compare th with these numbers. You have to always add them up, right? So let me go over there. I have a 500 gram uh, weight over here, mass rather. And I'm going to uh, hang it right here at the edge. And obviously, the crane will bend slightly. I can hear even the creaking sound. And we will go back and check the numbers a bit later. What I want you to, uh, I want you to give you actually certain numbers. Um, again, in a sense that it doesn't have to be exactly very precise. This is how, as long as we understand what the forces are. Before I forget, I should remind you that the force F is working right here where the rod is. And you can think of the horizontal force. FH is directly parallel to the ground, and FV perpendicular to FH, right? And then there is a tension T over here. The T is working in both places. But in one dimensional figure, we combine them. So uh, I already measured M1. And I'm going to write this on the board later on so that you don't have to worry about it, uh, if, even if you don't understand, understand my, uh, what I'm going to say right now. So M1, I already know, is 1.582 kilograms. 1.582, which is 1,582 grams. I'm going to write this down later. So this is the part right here. If you're in the lab, you would have to actually count every uh, nails and screws over here and every single item. And then we have these items separately. You have to weigh them and multiply it. So that takes a little bit of time. So, <clears throat> so this M1 that I just gave you, 1.582, um, I'm going to assume that it's working with some kind of center of gravity over here, somewhere here. And I'm going to quickly measure it. I don't want to second guess myself. Uh, this is about 64 centimeter. So I'm going to write down L1 as 64 centimeter, which is 0 0.64 meters, OK? So L1 is 64 centimeter. Let me then <clears throat> go over to L2. L2 is uh, given by this mass. Again, this mass is 500 grams, which is W2, which is 0.5 kilogram. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the length of it very quickly. I'm not claiming this is exactly precise, but I know exactly where one meter ends. I have pointed, measured it beforehand. So it's 26, 26. So it is 126 centimeter, 126 centimeter, or 1.26 meter. Okay, I'm going to write this down over on the board later on. 
I have one more length that I should measure is from this point A to here. <clears throat> it's about 20 centimeter. I don't want to make it too precise here. So 20 centimeter or 0 0.2 meter. So I got L1, L2, and L3. Now I need to do, um, I need to measure my angles. It's a little bit tricky, actually, especially because um, when you're in the lab, what you do is that you have to have somebody uh, doing this right here. That's your kind of the, if we, I'll show you from the other side. What happens here is that you go from here to the center of gravity, which is up here somewhere, right? So from here, Now, this, this angle should be, I think, less than that angle over here. So I have to kind of assume going straight down from that point on. So that's about 80 degrees. So that's my theta one, 80 degrees. And then I have to take my word for it. Um, then I go here, and again I have to go straight down. It's very difficult to do this one. I'm looking at the string, and it's about 85 degrees. So my theta two is about 85 degrees. And the last one is theta three. This is relatively easy because I have, um, okay, that's 61 degrees, I would say. So I got 85, 80, and 61. I'm going to go over to the board and write this down. But before I do this, I have a very important thing that I need to do. I need to find out what's my t um, combined tension is over here. I'll try to settle this down slightly. Okay, there's always some oscillations happening over here and that will show up in, on the screen. So I'll go over to the other side. Okay, this number, and it's not that bad. So what you have here is that you have kind of averaged it out. It would be 41.1, I would say, between 0.11 and 0.14. I would say 41.12. So let me write this down. 41.12 plus, this is about 0.32 to 0.42. I would say. So uh, let me say it's 43.36. If I add them up, I get about 84.5, okay? 84.5 Newton, that's together it's getting. So <clears throat> again, so this is our setup. Uh, let me, uh, before I finish, I just want to describe the data studio setup, what happens that any time uh, you do any type of experiment, you need to actually get the data from the, this is kind of an analog data, convert that digitally, and then sh throw it up on the computer screen. So this was, this goes through a PASCO, we call it 750 interface, so which basically digitizes the data. So from the, whatever the analog signal you're getting from here, it's digitized and then send it over here to a computer and there is another software which interprets it and throws it up on the screen. So in terms of I always advise my students that uh, learning to interface data, uh, computer programming at a very low level, which low level means actually high level. So low level means that you're doing some kind of assembler or other type of programming. And um, if you can set this up properly, 
uh, you can, you'll be always in great demand, okay? Uh, so let me leave, it, uh, leave you with that, and I'll go to the board and write down the numbers for you. Okay, so here we are at the very last part of the lab. I'm going to write down the numbers that we got with the setup. Um, uh, so I'm and following the table. Uh, we have W1. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to write down the mass of it. So it'll be 1.582 kilogram. But remember that you have to multiply with uh, 9.8 meter per second squared, that will give you <coughs> that in Newton, of course, right? Because that's the force, W1. And then I have L1, right away, L1. And L1, we got about uh, 0 0.64 centimeter, sorry, meter, 0 0.64 meter. And then I have L2, L2 we got 1.26 meter, that's the, almost the entire length of the crane, All right? And then I have L3, L3 we got um, how much did we get for L3? 0 0.2 meters, about 20 centimeter, right? And then I have to give you the W2 uh, W2 turns out to be, I, we gave it 500 grams, so it'll be 0.5 kilogram. And again, make sure that we multiply it with the G value, whatever comes out of that, Newton. So let me write down the rest of it uh, underneath those numbers. We have the next comes theta one. So theta one I have here is uh, 80 degrees. Uh, theta 2, I have 85 degrees. And theta 3, I have 61 degrees. Okay? I think that's all I need to do as far as from the setup, but then I need to give you the computer number that I read. So T experimental is 84.31 Newton, okay? So what you need to do now is using these numbers, find out what T calculation is or T calculated is, and then I want you to get a fractional error between them, and that's my fractional error uh, between this number and that number. So this is the part you do at home. Um, if you look at the write-up, I didn't mention that much of how to calculate FH and FV, but please do that. Uh, it's not in the table, but I want you to know what FH and FV is and what's the total of these two guys are. And and use the tangent theta to find out, um, so theta is tangent inverse, to find out the angle between the, <clears throat> you know, uh, if you look at here, this is your V, this is your FH, that's your F, and this angle that we're talking about is what this is, right? All right, so I hope that you have enjoyed this lab uh, as much as I did. Uh, and um, I will meet you in our one of the last labs, which will be the next one. And happy calculating. <laughs>